the mind is not your friend. Some of you look so serious. This is not serious satsang. It is a lot of fun. Feel happy. Happiness is your real nature. You might as well get used to it. It is going to overtake you whether you like it or not. I want you to ask yourself a question. Why am I here at satsang? Why did I come here? Did you come to observe the speaker? To compare him to other speakers? Most of you have gone to so many meetings, you're totally confused. Going to meetings for some of you is like going to the movies. You ask, what's playing this week? The same way you ask, who's speaking this week? But some of you never do anything about it. You listen to the message and then you go home and then you say, well, wasn't he or she an eloquent speaker? That was great. What are we going to do now? Let's go bowling. Let's go watch TV. And you forget all about the meeting until next time. Some of you have been going to meetings for 30 years or more. What have you accomplished? You have read every book that has been written. Where are you? Are you happy? Are you liberated? Are you free? Ask yourself. What we offer here is absolutely nothing. No thing. It's all in the invisible. It all has to do with consciousness and consciousness is your real nature. It's really what you are. When you identify with consciousness, you become your real self. When you don't, you're a part of humanity, struggling, trying to become free. In order to understand the body-mind phenomena, that you're not the body-mind, you first have to understand what the mind is. What is the mind? It is merely a conglomeration of energy, of thoughts, thoughts about the past and the future. That's all the mind is. The mind is not your friend. But you can use the mind to accomplish many things. We have all been programmed, brainwashed. It started when you were in your mother's womb. All of our feelings, all of our negation or positiveness, all of our energy was transferred into you. Not only that, but you have samskaras, past life tendencies, fears, prejudices that also go into your subconsciousness before you are born. When you come out into the world, you're put in your crib and you pick up the vibration of your house, people fighting, parents hitting each other, loving each other, all that goes into your subconscious mind and makes up you. When you're at the age, when you walk, you go outside and play with some friends and your environment soaks into your subconsciousness mind. Then you go to school, you go to church, temple, synagogue, and all those teaching go into your subconscious. Then you grow up, you get a job, have a family, and here you are. You are a product of preconceived ideas, of concepts. But is that really you? It's you as long as you believe it's you. When you get tired of playing games, something within you gives you a push. That's called the inner guru. It pushes you from within and something outside leads you to the right person, to the right book, to the right environment that you have to be. Because you have given up playing games. In other words, you have become tired of the world and you want liberation. One thing liberation is very funny to me. It's like a person taking a shower saying, I want to get wet. Liberation is your very nature. You have to wake up to it to realize it's you. So you're a conglomeration of thoughts of energy that has programmed you since you were a baby. And here you are. And now that you're here and you know how you have been programmed, what are you going to do about it? But let's talk a little bit about the mind a little more. If you know about the mind, you will know what you have to get rid of. The mind doesn't really exist, but you have been programmed to believe that the mind is an entity, that it does exist. Therefore, you have to play this game, getting rid of the mind. 
let's see again how the mind works. Let us compare the mind to the earth. A farmer has two seeds. One is of nightshade, a deadly poison, and the other is of corn. The seeds are thoughts. The farmer plants both seeds, and once the seeds are planted, the earth has no alternative but to grow in abundance. Whatever has been planted, in the same way, when you accept certain thoughts, your mind grows these thoughts until they become your experience. And that is why you have the problem that you have got today. You have created them yourself. Take another example. Have you ever planted seeds? Sure you have. Some of you have. Say a farmer plants a rose seed, a tulip seed, a carrot seed. And let us imagine that these seeds are like us. They can think and talk like humans. And the rose seed says to itself, Look at that beautiful rose. They say that I will grow into a rose. I will become a rose. But that sounds impossible. How can I ever be a beautiful rose like that? It's virtually impossible for me to do that. By that very thought, the seeds would stagnate and not grow. The carrot seed says the same thing. I'm just a nothing, a nobody. How can I ever grow into a beautiful carrot? By that very thought, the seed would stagnate. In the same way I say to you, you are absolute reality. You are Brahman, infinite awareness, consciousness. But you say, how can that be? That sounds impossible. I'm just a lowly person. I'm nobody important. And you keep identifying with your body and your mind. As long as you identify with your body and your mind, the Lord of Karma, Ishvara, becomes your master. And you're under the jurisdiction of the Lord of Karma. Therefore, you keep coming back again and again to this earth. And then you become some sort of earthbound until you become totally free. But you have to do this by yourself. You have to practice certain techniques. Somebody asked me just recently, you said that consciousness, reality, is like a screen and the body, the world are all images on the screen. And the question is, since I believe I'm an image, can I change my image to a better one? In other words, as long as you believe that you're an image and you're not consciousness, can you improve your lot? Can you improve your lifestyle and change your image? Now that is up to the Lord of Karma. As most of you know, everything has been preordained, determined before you took up your body. But you have certain freedom, depending on your karma. And the question really is, can you make a sick body well? Can you make a poor person rich? Can you make a depressed person happy? You're working at a mind level when you do this. You're not going to the ultimate truth, but you're working from your mind. And you can never find freedom and liberation by working from your mind. As an example, let's say for instance, you manipulate your mind enough and you've got cancer. You've been working on yourself for 15 years. Use imaging techniques, use mind control. You imagine that the white blood corpuscles are attacking the cancer and you finally heal yourself of cancer. You get written up in the National Enquirer. You appear on Phil Donahue and you feel great and proud of yourself. You have healed yourself of cancer. Next month, you're crossing the street, a truck hits you and you're dead. That's what happens through mind manipulation. Let's take another case. You're working on yourself to become rich. You take the proper real estate courses. You learn business administration. You use mind control. And after 20 years, you become a multimillionaire. You get married and have three children. Then your wife and children get killed in an automobile accident. Somebody kidnaps you and holds you for ransom. And you have to pay out $10 million. And you're back where you started from. What I'm trying to say is, working with the mind is not the answer. We bypass the mind. We realize the mind is not our friend. The idea is to annihilate the mind, to annihilate thought. How do we do this? Through the method of Janamarga. 
through the method of vishara, self-inquiry. This is the fastest method, liberate you from confusion and ignorance. When you have a problem, when you have some sort of confusion, you simply ask yourself the question, to whom does this come? Who has this problem? Or who has this karma? And pretty soon the answer will come by itself, I do. Then you further ask, from where does this I come from? What is the source of I? You abide in the I. You hold on to the I. You started to use a meditation called I, I. You simply abide in the I as long as you can. And you follow the I thread into your spiritual heart. You say to yourself, I, 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 I. You remember that everything in the world is attached to I, isn't it? Think of all the times in your life you have said, I, I feel sick, I feel depressed, I feel happy, I feel out of sorts. Who's this I that you're talking about? Is it your body? It can't be your body. Because when you sleep and you wake up and you say, I slept. When you dream, you wake up, you say, I dreamt. And when you're awake, you say, I'm awake. To whom are you referring when you say, I? Find out. Go within. Ask yourself, who am I? Where did I come from? But never answer. Just pose the question. What is this source of I? And one day you will realize that I does not exist. When you follow I to the source, one day there will be like a big explosion and you will see myriads of light particles all around you. You will then realize that the whole universe is nothing but a bunch of light particles. Yet, this is not the answer. For where did the light particles come from? They come from nothing, from nothing. And nothing is consciousness. Consciousness is like space. It has no shape. Yet, it takes the shape of every creation. It appears to take the shape of the world, of people. Everything is consciousness. Consciousness is like a chalkboard. And the objects of the world are like images on the chalkboard. You can draw any image that you like. You can draw an Indian. You can draw two people fighting. Two people making love. And then you erase it and draw something else. But the chalkboard never changes. The chalkboard is always the same. So it is with you. You go through all kind of experiences. But the realization is that you're not the experience you're going through. Your consciousness. That is your real nature. Think about that. My real nature to you? I'm not a preacher, nor a philosopher. I'm not a minister, nor a lecturer. I can only share with you the way that I feel. When I use the word I am, I'm referring to all of you. I am is another word for God, the first name of God. Another word for consciousness, omnipresence is I am. I feel that I am not the body, not the mind. I am absolute awareness. I am ultimate oneness. I am infinite intelligence, nirvana, emptiness. I am that I am. I am Satsikt Ananda. I am Prabrahman. I was never born and I can never die. I am that I am. The world is a product of my imagination. I see the world as consciousness. I see the reality, perfection, peace, love, happiness. This is the real self and nothing else exists. Hey, Frog Prince Rana here and thank you for dropping by. Sorry for that long rambling. I was just reading an article from O Meditation by Robert Adams. Between you and me, this is a video for an audience of one and I'm pretty sure she will never say it. So even though I love the title and would like to agree with it, the mind is not your friend. 
deep down i know that my mind is who i am for better or worse with all the shortcoming it is who we are wherever you are i hope you're happy with your life and i wish i could join you in your journey